I'm doing the cozy Christmas tag. This is originally created by Call Me After Coffee and I will link the video down below. Um, and this is a tag that again I was tagged in by Lisa so thank you very much Lisa for tagging me in all these tags. And I'm here in my UD in my lovely Christmas red UD to do this tag because there is nothing comfier or cozier than an UD and you'll know if you have one. Um, this isn't actually an UD this is like just like a non-brand UD but still super warm. So question one is Twinkling Lights, what is the most beautiful book you own? Um, I had to look down my shelves because I was like, beautiful book, most beautiful book that I own. And I couldn't decide, I have so many with like really pretty spread edges and things. Um, but what I settled on was this edition I have of The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson, Hodgson and Burnett. I don't know why I can't say her name. Um, this is such a beautiful edition with the gold um, and the navy blue and it just it just keeps going it's to me this is very very much something that draws the eye and um, it's shiny and sparkly and just so so pretty the end pages are bees like what more do you want um i mean like gilded edges would just have like topped this off but this is one of the most beautiful books i own i know there are probably more if i thought about it hard enough um there's probably another book somewhere that i think is more beautiful but this to me um, is the first one that crossed my mind. Question two is the perfect tree. Will you pay more to get the prettiest edition of a book? I will within reason. So I will pay slightly more if it's a special edition of a book. Um, so like for example, the I'm looking at it right now, the Song of Achilles um, anniversary edition. It is a beautiful edition. Um, and I think, I didn't manage to get one of the signed ones, but I think think I believe the book was £20 and I ended up getting it slightly cheaper because it was on some sort of sale um, but £20 for a beautiful printed hardback um, with the you know the beautiful end pages and the signature and things like that I would I would pay that for a hardback um, it just really depends my it would need to sort of overcome like it would need to be like a favourite book and a pretty edition and then yes I would pay more but not like there's a, an edition of Babel the um, fairy loop edition I really want it but I'm not paying like 60 quid and upwards for it it's just not happening Um, that to me is, is a bit ridiculous Um, I know that's not what it cost originally because it was in the box but just as an example I love that book I love that cover would I pay more for it than a regular edition yes would I pay that much for it no <laughs> that's just a bit a bit much for me to to justify. Question three is build a snowman, make a Christmas book stack in colour or theme. So here we go. This is my Christmas stack. So I've gone for like the candy cane-esque colour. So I've got um, a dark shade of magic, bed queen, the ballad of songbirds and snakes, um, the complete Suki stack house stories, Rosie project and rich people problems to make this lovely uh, colourful little stack which is uh I'm quite happy with it and um, thank you to Siobhan for being like do um green red and white because otherwise I would be like what do I do yeah but this is my my stack next question is crackling fire what book makes you feel warm and cozy if you know me even remotely you know exactly what I'm going to say heart stopper this just gives me all the warm fuzzies I absolutely love Heartstopper. Um, it is, it has changed like so much. I actually now have a Heartstopper tattoo along here. It is the the leaves. Um, you'll have seen it probably in other videos um, or vlogs. But I went from not wanting to read this to binge reading it on webtoons, binging the TV show, buying the books, binging the books, and then I've read them I think four or five times at, like all through the year. Um, and that's just this year that like literally the day that the tv show came out is the first day that i ever read heartstopper and i loved it and yes my friends are right they knew i would love it i was wrong and i regret nothing because obviously it came to me at the right time question five is knee high socks what is the longest book you've read i had this for one of my videos i think that you'll see before this and i said written in my own heart's blood but I double checked because that was a scavenger hunt and that was off the top of my head but it is actually 
The Fiery Cross by Diana Gallagher. And this book is, um, I mean, it looks chunky. Um, it, it certainly looks chunky. Like, if you want to guess how many pages are in this book, um, please go ahead and type it in the comments. Pause me. Go type in the comments how many pages you think this book has, and we'll see what you think. But this is how, this is how big it is. Like, it's a big chunky book. Ready? So, in this book, and the acknowledgements, by the way, are in the front. This is to the end of the story. Is 1,412. And this is the longest book I have ever read, really. I, like, in my library, I put my library um, spreadsheet on longest to shortest books. And this is the longest book I own. And I highly doubt I've read anything bigger. I think this is actually bigger than Priory. And there are no breaks um, for, I mean, it's Bible pages anyway, and the chapters, so that's the start of a new chapter. Like, if it was, if the chapters started on a new page, it would be absolute bevel in this book. My hair keeps disappearing into my hoodie. Um, next question is question six. Ugly sweaters, what is the ugliest book you own? I've actually gone for this edition of, um, a Natural Exposure by Patricia Cornwell. The <laughs> These books, you can see them in the background, um, these are the biggest mishmash of books I have. They're from all different years, publications, like I don't have, I, I barely have two that are the same because um, <laughs> I love these books and my mum would find them for me in like charity shops and jumble sales and stuff like that and it means so much to me that my mum would see these books and pick them up for me because she knew how much I loved them and how much I had to catch up on because the first one was published in 1990 and she's done a book a year since then so there's lots of these books like like literally like this whole shelf and then down onto the next shelf is Patricia Cornwell so um, I love my mismatched set because of that um, but I just think this is this is just such an ugly cover I don't know why, I don't know who looked at that and went, mm hmm, that'll do. Question seven is blizzards, a book set in winter or a book that gives you the chills or has dark themes? And for this, I've chosen Random Acts of Heroic Love by Danny Scheinman. Sign? Scheinman. Me and names do not get along. Um, but this is a book about, um, sort of split into two timelines. I think this is one of the things that made me love that sort of thing. Um, so one is in 1917 during the Great War um, and the other is 1992 and the 1992 character is basically um, visiting the hospital with his grandmother who is our 1917 character um, is dying uh, basically and it's oh no that's wrong that's wrong I need to reread this because I don't remember what happened. But yeah, basically, um, the one that I do remember is our character from 1917. He is taken from a small village um, in Prussia and ends up in a prisoner of war camp in Siberia. And he wants to get back to his family and the girl that he loves in his village. Um, so he escapes and he has to walk back, basically, from Siberia to uh, Prussia in, like, in the winter. It is emotional, harrowing, he I think probably loses something to frostbite. Um, but it's been really a long time since I've read this but this is one of my favourite books of all time. It is fantastic and then you absolutely, if you read this book, which I really think you should, please read the dedication in the back because after reading this book and then reading the dedication afterwards it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, or you can read the dedication first and get the spoiler and then uh, read the book but it just it just hit me where it hurts and it's such a harrowing book um, dark themes with the, the way the war was um, and the fact that I believe I can't remember if his family are Jewish or not um, but it's it's so beautifully told and there's entries like diary entries um, alongside your normal prose and it's just oh, please I need more people to read this because I've never been able to talk to anybody about this book and I want to number eight is home for the holidays for the rereaders out there, are there any books that feel like going home? 
Um, I'm not gonna say Outlander again because that doesn't quite qualify for what I feel when I think of that feeling. Um, what I am gonna say is The Chronicles of Narnia. I absolutely adore The Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, I think I did this again in one of my other videos, talked about this, um, and I've had many, many different versions of these books. I've read these books, the first books I ever read, on my own, my granddad read them to me when I was younger than that. I love these stories, I love these books, I love the world of Narnia. Um, is it perfect? Absolutely not. It was written in the 50s, um, 40s and 50s. I <laughs> definitely have problems with this, but for that nostalgia feeling, for that deep feeling of home that Narnia has within me, this is the only way I can answer this question. Okay, so that is that tag. Um, I'm doing so many tags this Vlogmas, I'm doing 12 days of Vlogmas, if you don't already know you should know by the time you get here. Um, so thanks very much for watching, um, I hope you enjoy Vlogmas and enjoy your winter holidays and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!